Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends with another champion guide this time on the little dwarf of Veer the Alchmage. Uh, pretty cool champion who was added about two years, maybe three years now uh, to the game as part of the Virgum Car fusion actually. So dating back quite a bit. Uh, I've always enjoyed this little dwarf. I would say he's kind of like a, maybe like a B minus type overall grade on this champion, not to ruin the surprise at the end uh, out the gate here. But I do think that he can be serviceable for a lot of accounts, specifically in fact, Action Wars or Progression or in Rare Only Secret Rooms, uh, which I will show you guys in today's video. Uh, first off, a few shouts to you guys. We have Bernardo Sturmer looking for a, he also loves the Dwarves faction, looking for an Avir uh, guide. We have Cool Wheels Racing looking for Avir the Archmage and Coffin Smasher. And then we have Swish looking for Avir the Archmage. Arch, Archmage? Alchmage. Alchmage! Get it right, man! I'm just joking. Got him pretty recently and was curious about his kit. Well, let's go ahead and review said kit. Be right back. All right, so as we mentioned, Avir the Alchemage is a magic affinity rare dwarf champion. Here he is in all his uh, glory. He's got all the uh, alchemy uh, gear required on his belt here. Uh, pretty cool aesthetic about this dude. He's got his big staff as well. You can even fit it on the screen. There we go. There we go. Uh, so what does this dude do, right? On his A1, he's a support champion. His base stats, his speed is okay. Is pretty good. 102 for a rare especially. His defense is good for a rare at over 1,000. And then 16, almost 17K, pretty Pretty solid for a rare as well, right? On the A1, attacks one enemy on the Flask of Vitriol. Uh, has a 45% chance of placing a Poison debuff for two turns. Big version of Poison, which is pretty nice at a pretty dependable uh, land rate on the A1 for a rare. On Corroding Catalyst, his A2 ability does require seven books to get fully booked. But when you do, you will attack all enemies and then have a 100% chance of placing a decreased attack for two turns. This is the weak version of decrease attack but it's better than nothing decrease attack of course one of the most fundamental fundamental excuse me debuffs in the game also places a decreased speed for one turn on targets under poison debuffs okay so it's the weak version of decreased speed but decreased speed just like decreased attack i feel like it is an incredible staple of so many teams out there i feel like it's probably one of the more underrated debuffs out there out there in the game excuse me on the a3 he has a turn meter fill of 15 percent and heal all allies by 15 percent of this champion's max hp it is on a four turn cooldown only two books required uh which is nice after coming off of that A2 with seven books, uh, but definitely worth booking this Vitalizing Potions ability. Now, the downside is it is a four-turn cooldown. We'd love to see this on a three-turn cooldown. The upside is, especially in the Dwarves faction, there's not that many good healers out there. Of course, there's Demitha, but what if you don't have Demitha? Outside of Legendaries, there's not a lot of great healing options. Avir is a great healing option. 15% being that it's his max HP allows us to stack up his HP as high as we possibly can, pick up some healing masteries if you want to. Heck, we can even pick up a curing set on this champion if we really want that heal, because again, there's not that many options in Dwarves faction. Uh, so there's a few different ways to build him, but we can get this heal, so it feels a lot more than 15% uh, when applicable to the battle to the rest of our allies. All right, let me show you how I built him, guys. I went super unorthodox on this build uh i feel like most people will tell you accuracy speed sets uh what else accuracy speed uh i, I do see some people recommend lifesteal on this dude as well uh let me just search for him here i, I don't I don't love his damage, honestly. I mean, he's an attack-based uh, support champion, right? Uh, his base attack is 881, which isn't atrocious but it's not good either right so putting crit rate on his gauntlets i'd rather just go all out with hp honestly and just get better heals out of this dude and all his debuffs for that we're gonna need his accuracy and we're gonna need him to be you know fairly speedy be able to take a hit and a lot of hp so with that being said we do have his total stats here are a 61k on the hp we have 2200 on the defense 211 on the speed and 343 on the accuracy again stat priorities on this dude are gonna be hp and accuracy and speed, okay? Uh, I don't love him, as I already said. I don't love him in lifesteal. I'm not sure why most guys recommend lifesteal on him. I'd rather just go ahead and pump him with HP and I decided to go a little bit outside the box here and put him in a toxic set, okay? Why toxic? 
Well, it's really because of the A2. And the easy way to do this is just set him up and put him on the same team with other poison uh, champions out there. But in a toxic set, we can still prioritize HP. We can still prioritize speed and everything else, make sure we have an accuracy banner on him. But then we can de start dependably landing the decreased speed, uh, at least against bosses, right? Because we're going to really, between the A1 and the Toxic set, we're going to make sure there's poison pretty much on everybody. And the nice thing is, is of course, the poison from the Toxic set does not require accuracy to land. Uh, we still want accuracy on him because of all those nice debuffs on the A2 and the A1, uh, but it's just a nice kind of addition. So yeah, I went Toxic. And with the Toxic set, in addition to all of that, we can actually get some damage damage out of this dude as well, right? Uh, without having to build him with crit rate, we can focus on the stats that we want out of his gear. So again, a toxic set is definitely not an orthodox. It's not going to be what you see when you look him up on the internet, but I like looking at underused sets for underused champions, right? Because we can't put our best sets on everybody. But again, if you don't have toxic, you don't want to go toxic. I'd rececommend immortal perception in speed gear, two piece sets on this dude. Uh, really quickly, I want to go ahead and see where hellhades.com ranks him in different dungeons. So shout out to hellhades.com. They've given him a three in frost spider, a three in eternal dragon, a three and a half in magma, three and a half in clan boss, three and a half in dragon. And that's about it for everything over three stars three in arena he has a 4.7 multiplier on his a1 he has a 4.2 on his a2 don't get too excited about that again his attack is so low that it's not really worth it so think of him as like a bellower without damage meaning that he has like some weak version of debuffs on the same ability some essential debuffs uh but also a very competent healer like a gear grinder type healer or an abyssal type healer as well uh very nice very nice kit uh masteries let's do them together guys let's do the masteries together so i want to go support and i want to go offense on this guy uh i'll just go i want to go war master between the toxic set and war master i think we can actually get a real decent amount of support damage i say support damage meaning that he's he's not going to be our nuker he's there to keep the nuker alive and debuff the enemies but going down the left hand side and ending with war master and that's all i'm going to choose from the offensive side of things i think it's it's a way to go uh if you didn't care about damage at all on this dude and you just wanted to keep your team alive, uh, you could absolutely go defense. If I was going to go defense, I would go with defense. Uh, I would go blast proof. I would go resurgent. I would come down delay death and I would go with retribution and deterrence for the same reason that we have him in a toxic set to land more poisons and set up that decreased speed on his A2, especially for bosses. On the support side of things, there's nothing wrong going pinpoint accuracy, charge focus, swarm fight, swarm smiter. Lore of Steel, Master Hexer, uh, and Sniper to get that poison on the A1 up to a 50% land rate. However, I do want to go HP, and I do want to go with uh, Lay on he Hands, uh, Healing Saver, Merciful Aid. I do want to go with... He's not buffing, so I don't need Lasting Gifts. I will go Spirit Haste, and I'll come and I'll pick up Sniper just so I can have that extra chance of the poison on the A1 as well. Uh, and, of course, if you don't have them booked up, you're definitely going to want to have Sniper because of that A2. Keep in mind, it requires a lot of books to get those debuffs up to 100% land rate. Uh, we will have... Uh, let's come down Exalt and Death and still be able to pick up... We can choose here. It's our choice. We can go Swarm Smiter, increase accuracy for every enemy alive, but we don't need it. Instead, I'm going to go Arcane Celerity, giving a chance to improve our turn meter every time a debuff uh, we cast or is expired. We'll also pick up eh, Lore of Steel. We'll go Evil Eye. I would go Lore of Steel if we had, of course, Perception and Immortal and all those other sets that we spoke about speed. So anyway, guys, just so I can move out of the way here, here's how we go. I like this build. I like this setup. It's very a bit unorthodox, but I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and try this dude in battle, guys. Actually, I didn't even show you what I had on him for artifacts, did I? Uh, my game, okay. My game is, does not want me to feature of here. Okay. So again, where I personally would use him, guys, I know that we reviewed what Haiti says about him already, but personally, I would use him and I have accuracy, I have HP, I have HP on the ring and the amulet, HP percentage on the gauntlets, HP percentage on the chest, speed on the boots, okay? Uh, ice Golem, progression. I think he's very good in Ice Golem. Nice to keep your team topped off and alive. Nice debuffs as well, right? Obviously can land the decreased speed against the, uh, the Ice Golem himself. Uh, Faction Wars, absolutely, right? Uh, I feel like you can use this dude 
at level 50, especially in faction wars, get away with it, right? Uh, secret rooms. This is secret room 12, the hardest secret room, magic, rare magic champions only. Frankly, I don't even know if we're going to be able to beat this, uh, but we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. I mean, we can beat it, but but just to be real with you guys, the best way to beat this secret room is to have everybody in stun sets. And as you know, Avir the Alchemage is not in a stun set. Uh, so they recommend, uh, let's see, they recommend on Hell Hades in terms of blessings, survival instinct or faultless defense. Uh, I personally would go with faultless defense. I think that's the way to go. That's that's uh, that's where I would have him. Here he goes with his A2. By the way, I should mention now that we could easily put him in a stun set, right? For areas like this. He could absolutely be a competent stunner. You know, I'm just going to go with the A1 here because Purgator is the only alive uh, champion and save the AoE of Executioner for the next wave here, right? So the idea here is, is it's very difficult to get a perfect run here in these waves. And when I say perfect run, what I mean by that is landing all the stuns that we need without taking a tremendous amount of damage. Purgatory can really smack too, so I'm trying to poke away at him. Uh, so that's where a view of the Alchemage comes in handy, right? He can come in there and he can be in charge of making sure stun, stun, stun. He can be in charge of making sure that we remain topped off and healthy, right? And boost our turn meter along the way. A 10k heal is very freaking good, guys. Very good considering, uh, nice stun there. Whew. Very good, considering it's only a 15% heal, but it's 15% of his max HP, and that was enough to top off everybody, uh, and then some. Let's go in with the A2 again, refresh our debuffs. I have to say, again, the weak version of decrease attack is incredibly good when you don't have any other versions, right? So here he goes there. We're, we're in trouble here. We're going to need his heal, but we're two turns away from it. So maybe I shouldn't have burnt it so easily. But we are positioned pretty nicely here. Landing those... Uh, he's landing those... Okay. I think we're going to be fine here. Going to be careful about... What is he? Warcast? Death caster? Death... Warboy? What's his name? What's that guy's name again? I forget some of these dudes. All right. Poor Avir on the other side. We love you, buddy. So you can see this first wave. We're able to get through it pretty easily. As you guys know, we always want to uh, target the highest turn meter. And you can see I'm starting to A1 cycle here, right? So we land a couple more stuns. Let's go in the back there. You in the back. Stunned. And then what I think I'm actually going to do here is I might burn, nah, I was, I was gonna say I might burn his heal, but I'm not going to. All right, so let's just target over here, and now let's switch it up again, and we go on to the second wave. So you guys, I mean, you probably get the point here, uh, but this is essentially how we, you know, how we get through this content, right? Stun lock, total stun lock team, right? And he's going to be in there. I mean, I do not want to discount. Hopefully you guys can respect all the buffs that he's bringing to the table here, right? Very good. Very good. Exceptionally good to have all of those uh, debuffs on a team like this. We're going to go right in there and look at that. I mean, that's very, very powerful. All right. Got to be very careful here. Reduce turn meter and we landed two stuns. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go in over here with Alhane. Can't get that last stun to land, but we can get that nice big heal on Executioner who really needed it there, right? So I have to say, things are going pretty well so far. All right. Let's, uh, let's use the A3 so we have an increased defense. A1, no stuns landed, unfortunately. Got to be very careful of Alhane right over here. Ooh, that's a big smack from Galek. Got to make sure. If we die here, I'm not going to keep redoing it every time. Uh, but, okay, we land the stuns on everybody. Everything's looking great. We still need to do a little bit more damage before we can A1 cycle. Look at all those debuffs, man. Oh, I have to say, man, I actually really enjoy having him on this team. Uh, because it's going to be hard to withstand some of these attacks, these hard nukes with these squishy champions, and I screwed up there attacking the wrong person. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me. Uh, I think we're going to be okay, though. 
Let's, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's come back in with another A2 of Aethel. Let's go A2 here. Does a little bit more damage. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's get a nice heal, nice turn meter boost. I think we can uh, start A1 cycling right now. Start with Galek, get that stun down. Beautiful. Watch Alhane. Very dangerous there, Alhane. Can we land some stuns, please? I don't want to burn his A2 just yet. Come on. Come on. Take her out. There we go. Take out the other Alhane. Nice. Take out Galek. Yes. <laughs> All right. Come on. We got this, guys. We got this. All right. Once we get to wave three, it's a big... I don't want to jinx it. But it gets a lot easier because we don't have to have everybody alive and fully topped off and, and skills all on cooldown or whatever. Two stuns landed. One more. Decrease defense. Decrease. I mean, see how valuable. I'll stop repeating myself. I, I know you guys understand. Notice how I'm going in with Divine Blades on Aethel first before her extra turn ability. We do that to reduce her the cooldown on the AoE. We can get it down to a two-turn cooldown. So we actually don't care so much about the self-buffs. We just care about the... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna not use the A3 just yet. I'm going to wait till somebody hits us first. See, now we use the extra turn, and now we're only one turn off that cooldown on the AoE, and we can stun some more, right? Uh, yeah, I'll just go A3. A1. A couple more stuns, maybe. And let's go over here. Can't really see everybody. Again, I'm going to hold off on it. The decreased speed is coming in absolute clutch on these enemies, guys. It doesn't sound like much, 15%, but it is, it is big. It's big. And look at this. Everybody's locked down. I think we've only had one attack on us, right? One attack on our team. And I'm, I think somebody might attack us right here. Okay, that's fine. That's not a big deal. Hopefully... But if things got a little rocky, if RNG, you know, came in, I'm still not going to use the A3. I want that complete heal when I really need it, right? Let's go A2 here. And I have a guide, I want to say, on every champion on this team right now, on this channel. So if there's somebody that you want to see a specific, uh, you know, run with or whatever, now I can go ahead and use the ability. Turn meter boost, I feel like we're pretty much out of the woods here. And Flawless, the most difficult secret room in the game, is now over. We can just go auto from here on out. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, This guide on Avir the Alchemage. Very good, underrated support champion, a rare. You know, after this video, I gave him a B- minus in the beginning. I'm going to upgrade the little fella to a B. How about that? Maybe even a B+. Plus. Depends on what you need, just like every champion in this game. Thank you for watching, guys. Much love, and as always, take care.